What's going on, Star Wars fans? My name is John Solo, and today we are talking about Rogue One. We're talking about it because just like another prequel I know, it changed something about the Force, except it did it in a way that isn't totally trash. Without the midichlorians, life could not exist, and we would have no knowledge of the Force. Well, let's take a look at what is probably the most infamous question in the Star Wars universe right after the whole Death Star exhaust port thing. Why do stormtroopers have such terrible aim? Now, before you comment telling me that they don't and that they let Han, Leia, and Luke escape the Death Star so they could track them to the Rebel base, I know this. However, today we're going to take a harder look at the stormtroopers' combat skills because there's a scene in Rogue One that may give us the reason why the Empire didn't totally dominate the Rebellion because realistically, they should have. They had more advanced weaponry, better trained soldiers, near unlimited resources, and highly skilled tacticians. But the one thing that they didn't have was the force on their side. Wow, the force playing a significant role in battle? Who'd have thunk? Yeah, at first glance, this seems kind of obvious. Also, this theory has been popping up everywhere since the movie came out, so you're probably thinking this video is going to be the same as every other person's that you've heard talk about it. However, I'm going to examine this theory from another angle and apply it to some situations that I haven't heard anyone talk about yet. So first, let's talk about the scene in question. During the battle on Scarif, Donnie Yen's character, Shirit, or uh, Chirit, I honestly don't know how to pronounce his name. He's my favorite character from the movie, but they only say his name like twice with explosions in the background, so I'll just go with Shirit. So during the battle on Scarif, Shirit, Baze, and some other rebel soldiers are pinned down by the Empire. And this is a problem because they need to activate a switch that will turn on an antenna to broadcast the Death Star plans. It looks like they're about to meet their end when suddenly Shirit stands up and says, I'm one with the Force, and the Force is with me. And he starts walking towards the switch, right through the Stormtrooper's line of fire, not getting hit. And let me emphasize this, he's walking. He's not running, he's not staying low to avoid fire, he's walking, and not even at a brisk pace. The entire time, he's repeating his mantra, I'm one with the Force, and the Force is with me. He manages to get through the entire battle, activates the switch, and after a moment of relief, he's killed. It's sad, but the positive note is he accomplished his mission. But how is this possible? Up until that point, the rebels were being lit up by the stormtroopers and suddenly they start missing like crazy? Sounds kind of ridiculous, right? So could it just be luck? Well, we all know the famous Obi-Wan line. In my experience, there's no such thing as luck. So what else could it be? Well, this is Star Wars, so pretty reasonable to say it's the Force, right? But Shira isn't even a Jedi. He's not even a Force user. Right here in the official Rogue One guide, it says he seemingly lacks Force abilities. I know a lot of people are gonna focus on that seemingly, but for once, let's just take the scene at face value. Shirat wasn't able to walk through the line of fire because he was using the Force. He was able to do it because the Force was with him. As he said earlier in the film, I fear nothing for all is as the Force wills it. He knew that the Force had control over his destiny and he knew that he had two options. He could stay in cover with the Rebels, trying not to get shot and hope that a solution presents itself eventually, or he could go out on a limb and do what he needs to do. He knew that if it was his destiny to activate that switch, then he would make it across the battlefield just fine and he did. So this scene kind of gives us a more in-depth look at how the Force works. It serves as a sort of plot armor and explains why our heroes have been able to get out of situations where death was far more likely. At least that's how I interpreted the scene. A lot of other people I'm seeing think that the Force just protects Force users both passive and otherwise, so if you feel the Force, it protects you. But I don't think that's right. Also, I'm pretty sure that the Jedi Purge is evidence against that. That's why I think this plot armor concept is the most logical conclusion. The Force decides who it's going to protect and not protect. But now the question remains, how does it decide who it wants to protect? I think by looking at the Jedi Purge, it's sort of obvious. It protects the people who are going to bring balance to the Force. We've all heard the other interpretation to Anakin being the Chosen One. He brought balance to the Force by wiping out almost all of the Jedi. After that happened, with a few exceptions of course, there were almost no light side Force users locked. When the events of Episode 4 start up, we've got Obi-Wan and Yoda on one side with Vader and Sidious on the other. And if you want to be technical, Snoke is roaming around the depths of unknown space. By the time episode 6 comes around, Luke is the only light side force user left with Vader and Sidious and Snoke on the other side. And then we reach the climax. Vader returns to the light, killing Palpatine in the process, and then dies himself. So who are we left with in the end? Just Luke and Snoke. One Jedi, one Sith. 
balance. This balance could not have been reached without the help of Han, Leia, Chewbacca, C-3PO, or R2-D2. If just one of those characters had died, if just one stormtrooper had better aim, Luke would not have been able to fulfill his destiny. It didn't matter that they weren't all force sensitive, they were vital to bringing balance back to the force. And Shirat is a vital part of this as well. He was able to get to that switch because if he didn't, then Princess Leia would have never received the plans, wouldn't have given them to R2-D2, who wouldn't have been bought by Uncle Owen, and Luke would have never discovered the message for Obi-Wan, which set him on the path to becoming a Jedi. We could even take this idea a bit further and use it to explain why Ben Solo became Kylo Ren and slaughtered all of Luke's students. Luke was training too many Jedi. We don't know exactly how many, but just like decades before on Coruscant, the Force was losing its balance. It took Snoke bringing Ben to the dark side to make things somewhat even again. Then, sometime later, Rey was found. We don't know how things are going to go in the future. Kylo Ren could follow in his grandfather's footsteps and return to the light. Rey could fall to the dark side. We just don't know. But as of right now, things are even. So in a way, Rogue One was able to give us a totally new way to look at the Force. We all knew it had massive influence over the Star Wars galaxy, but now we know just how specific its influence can be. Stormtroopers on the Death Star aside, it's the reason why our heroes were able to make it through such extreme situations. The attack on the Death Star, the freezing temperatures on Hoth, the escape from Jabba's palace, the battle of Endor, it was all as the Force willed it. And that is where this theory ends. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Like I said before, I know a lot of people are using that scene on Scarif to sort of explain why stormtroopers have such bad aim in general, but I don't know. The Force just protecting people who are Force sensitive doesn't really make sense to me. Like the bad aim in the Force could totally be connected, but I don't think it's that shallow of a connection, if that makes sense. I mean, my theory might seem kind of cheap as well to blame something like plot armor on the Force, but in my opinion, it just makes more sense, I guess. But now I want to hear what you guys think. Do you believe in this theory? Do you not? Leave your thoughts in a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, but your hunger for Star Wars wasn't totally satisfied, make sure you check back on the channel over the next couple of weeks as I'm going to be releasing a lot of Star Wars related content, specifically Rogue One related content. Going to be talking theories, trivia, etc. A lot of etc. I know that's what you guys really come to the channel for. Of course, the best way to stay updated on the channel is to hit that subscribe button down below below and turn notifications on so you don't accidentally miss something I talk about that you might find interesting and to follow me on social media that's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and my official subreddit where you guys can submit your own Star Wars and Rogue One theories. Also Disney and Pixar theories if that's your thing. And if you want to show even more support and be the best fan ever hit that like button down below and share this video on all of your social medias with all of the people you know that like Star Wars even a little bit. Don't do that. That's annoying. Whether you end up doing all of that or none of it at all is totally up to you. But let me just say, you guys, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll be seeing you very soon. May the force be with you. And remember, John shot first.